What's up guys, Chris here from Mainly Mesh and welcome to my outdoor review of the brand new Maverick Havoc Head. I'm home in Maine for a week, wanted to show off the beautiful outdoors. Hope you guys are having an amazing July 4th week as well, this is the weekend before. And as we know comes with July 4th, we have a brand new offering from Maverick. The Havoc is the long awaited next step in the Maverick defensive line. This is targeted for an LSM, but really I think would work for a lot of long poles in general. Uh, the tank was a head that warped a lot, so I was really glad they made an improved version. Oh, there goes my phone. This is what happens when I forget to bring my tripod. So let's get down into the nitty gritty. A lot of waves, a lot of boats. I'm gonna go pros and then cons and then break down the rest of the head from there. There isn't really anything novel in this head that they're advertising, which is good. I think Maverick already has a ton of great technology. So uh, scoop is really solid, nice smooth scoop. It's a little thin, but it's actually very stiff. I like that they put most of the struts up in the top half of the head because that's where you get the most warp in a defensive head. They kept the throat very open and light. That's where they cut out the most weight, which is also very interesting. I'm gonna be very interested to see, how many times can I say interested? It's gonna be cool to see how cool, I have to use interested. It's gonna be very interesting to see how this head warps in the throat. That's my only worry. So as you can see down here, they basically kept this whole section open. So they advertised it as a three strut design, which was kind of funny. I don't know if that was a typo in the letter I got because there's definitely four struts, but I don't know if they're including that as like part of the throat because that's usually where the plastic ends, but they've just cut out this huge hole. So that cuts out a ton of weight down at the throat. Um, which is uh, a design, if it works, I hope they do that on all their heads because that cuts out a ton of weight and it still feels pretty stiff down there. Scoop solid, solid four strut design, nice and strong, very good in this component. Uh, weakest spot of this head is probably in this flare area, um, which isn't great. Uh, it's where the tank flared as well, but honestly, they could pinch the head in a good way. So hopefully it holds up pretty well over time. They use their X-Rail technology, which is their way of kind of coring out a little weight while keeping some strength, right? So they have the X-Rail on these three, and then they have this somewhat twisted rail down here uh, that's flat on the inside. Um, two throat holes, which has become the industry standard. They don't include any of the tension lock technology from the Kinetic, um, which is fine. I don't think you need it in this head. Now let's dig into how it strings, because to me that's the most important part. Overall it strings a nice solid mid pocket very well. Uh, I'm going to comment a little on what I see a lot in pretty much every defensive head on the market that's starting to bug me a little. So everybody in the lacrosse community says they want a high pocket for defense. I don't fully agree with that. I think you should have a mid to mid low pocket, but it is what it is. So what that means is most of these companies are keeping the lowest point of that side rail very high in the head. But the issue is, is that point when you flip it over is really among the widest parts of the head. So if we imagine the depth of a pocket uh, in terms of width of the head, the easiest way to think about it is if I'm pulling a string, right? So this mesh has a certain width across. So if I pull it tight, it can't go any further, right? So if I have a string this wide, if I bring my hands together, the string will make this nice V, which is why when the head is very tight at the bottom, that's where our pocket naturally sits, right? That's where the curve comes from. Because of this, when you put the lowest point of the head very high up, that's kind of counterproductive, right? Because the mesh has to be pulled tight across that section, meaning naturally the pocket can't form there. So this head isn't as bad of a culprit as others. A lot of defensive heads have this like very sudden jut right at the top of the head, which to me makes no sense. So this does string a very nice um, mid pocket and it does you know, feel kind of top heavy, which is a nice feeling for a defenseman, kind of gives you better ball feel. Um, but just wanted to put that out there because going forward, honestly, the best way to do it would actually be to do more of like an X6 spec up top and really beef up the head. So it doesn't really need to be all that wide in my opinion. 
Um, I don't think that helps you catch a ball any better as a defenseman. Um, would rather just see something beefed up a little thinner so you can actually have a pocket all the way through the stick if you're trying to have a higher pocket. One of the coolest features of this head though is it comes in at 5.4 ounces, which for a defensive head is super light. So that's why they're targeting it more towards LSMs. Um, like I said, really interest, interested to see how it holds up because if it does well, that's about as light of a defensive head on the market. The only one in that area I believe is the I think the 2T is around that and then also the PAL defensive head so it's a lot lighter than some of those really beefy defensive heads which if that's what you're into could be awesome uh, just have to see how the durability is all in all really like this product uh, my recommendation is that I would buy the white version right it is so light that I think you're gonna wanna get every ounce of durability out of this head that you can, and the white model is going to be stronger just because of the nature of the plastic. Um, but other than that, check out this release on July 4th. Let me know if you have any questions down below. You can buy it at the link down below. Here's the pattern real quick. Tie first, skip, tie the first 10 diamond row to the third sidewall hole, skip, anchor knot, skip, anchor knot, skip, KSI, 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 tie one, one skip to tie off. Throat on the nine diamond, I use G3 Ultralight for this. So it might be a little bit tighter with, uh, with something like a Type 3 or something or a Hero Mesh, but that's what I got. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I will catch you guys next time.